All right, so we want to introduce this concept of U substitution. And um, there's actually a little bit of a rule for that we're going to learn first for simple versions. Because the simple versions of what's called U substitution do fall into a pretty a very predictable pattern. Okay? Uh, I also want to introduce, though, the idea of what we're doing. But you'll notice both of these integrals that we have, we don't have rules for the antiderivative. Okay? We have a way to integrate 1 over the square root of x. We don't have a rule for 1 over square root of 1 minus of 1 minus 2x, okay? We have rules for integrating e to the x. We don't have rules for integrating e to the 2x, okay? But the idea here is that we are dealing with composite functions, all right? Now, we've dealt with composite functions before in calculus, but it was always it was always in derivatives. And for derivatives, how did we handle composite <coughs> functions? No? Composite functions. If we have a function inside a function. We do one rule after another. What do we call it? Chain rule, okay? Chain rule. Unfortunately, there is no chain rule for integration. There's also no product rule or quotient rule either. So we're actually quite limited on the types of functions that we can integrate in calculus. Okay? Now, um, that being said, there are several that we are able to integrate. And you'll notice here in this case, we're dealing with a composite function where the inner function is linear. You'll notice here I'm taking the integral of f of a linear function. So I want the integral of f, but it's not f of x, it's f of some linear function. And what this is saying right here is that if I take the integral of f of a linear function, then it will equal the antiderivative of that linear function times 1 over a. Now, what is a in the linear function? It's the slope of that linear function. It's also, in calculus terms, the derivative. Yeah, the derivative. Okay. So, the derivative of ax plus b is a... And notice I'm multiplying by a 1 over a. Now, in our next lesson, when we really get into doing u substitution specifically, we'll see where this all comes from. But I want you to start, first of all, recognizing the composite functions and being able to handle them on a basic level, okay? Now, we will recognize a u and start with that. We're not going to do the entire process with the linear ones because we have this pattern. But I do. it, it can be helpful for you to go ahead and rewrite this a little bit, okay? So let's say that I have this 1 minus 2x that's inside the square root, okay? I'm going to let u equal that inner function, a 1 minus 2x. Okay, now we already said du dx, the derivative, would be just the slope of that linear function. Okay, so we're going to keep an eye out, keep an eye on that as we do this. But what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of 1 over radical u, du. Notice I'm not putting an equal sign, and that's intentional because there's a little more to this, but I want you to be able to see this part, okay? How do we find the integral of 1 over radical u? Wait, the integral? The integral. Move it to the top, and then do it the integral over the power? 
Okay, so this would be u to what power? Negative one half. U to the negative one half power. So now I add one to it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's u to the positive one half divided by one half. So that's the same thing as times two. So it's two u to the one half. Okay? So here's what this is saying. I'm dividing by a half. You add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So okay. we're dividing by a half as times two. Okay. okay? Now, I need to put my one minus two x back in. All right? So the one minus two x. I have two radical one minus two x. Hang on, we'll get to that part. Okay, so what I just found was the antiderivative of ax plus b. Why do you have to find the derivative of u? Because negative 2 is over here. We're about to look at that, okay? We're about to see that part. Notice all of this was just to find this capital F of ax plus b. So now I can actually write my answer. This whole thing equals, it's 1 over a. Well, a is the negative 2. a is the slope of that linear thing, which is also my du dx, okay? So it's a negative 1 half times what I just found, okay? Times 2 <coughs> radical 1 minus 2x. Yep, we can. So that the 2's cancel, and we have negative square root of 1 minus 2x, and now I'll throw in the plus c. What's the difference okay. between the antiderivative and the integral? Um, there isn't. It's just synon a synonym. Okay. All right, did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, once you get the hang of this, you won't write out all of this work that I just showed here. But I want to show you that just so you can start to kind of see the process. Is the only reason we found the derivative was u because the direction said do 1 over a times that? Yeah. So if we were just doing the integral, we wouldn't have found derivative anything. Well, yeah, we do in this case. That's the thing. We do have to find the derivative of something because that's what that a is. Okay. So the directions will tell us we have to use a. Yeah, we have to use a. That's in our formula, one over a. Oh, it's a formula. And that a is the slope of the line or the derivative of that linear function. They're, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this one, I'm actually going to break up into two separate integrals. Okay. So I have. The integral, and I'm going to bring this 2 out here, of e to the 2x dx minus the integral of e to the negative 3x dx. Now, I'm not going to write it all out in this case, okay? But uh, what is the integral of e to a power? Huh? Okay, times 1 over that. So, um, the, the integral of e to the x is e to the x, okay? So, what I would do here is I, I have the 2 here still. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. So, I'm going to make the, the integral of e to the 2x e to the 2x. But since that's a linear function in there, 2x, what's the, what's the derivative of that linear function? 2. two. So guess what? In front of that, I'm going to multiply by 1 over 2. Okay? So that's the A. I'm multiplying by 1 over that. Okay? Okay? 
Now, likewise, in the second one, the integral of e to the x is e to the x, so I'm going to take this e to the negative 3x, and I'm going to leave it in e to the negative 3x, but then what do I have to do? Yeah, multiply by a negative one third. So it's plus one third. Okay. And then we can simplify our answer. But notice here, there's that negative three. I'm multiplying by a negative one third. Okay. So now simplifying, I have e to the two x because the half and the two cancel minus a negative, so that's plus, and I'll just write this as 1 over 3e to the 3x. I'll keep it a positive exponent, so I'll pull that negative 3x, pull the e down to the bottom. Plus c? And then, I, and then at the end, do your plus c. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this isn't too bad. But remember, this only works if the inner function is linear, okay? Only works if the inner function is linear. Okay? Let's try a couple others. Okay, I want to take the integral of this with respect to x. So, integral with respect to x. So I have two times, what's the integral of sine? Negative cosine. Negative cosine. So I have negative cosine of 3x. And then since there was a 3x inside, I multiply by a 1 -third on the outside. Okay? So again, there's the slope, or the derivative of that linear function, I multiply by the one-third on the outside. Okay? For the other part, the integral of cosine is? Sine. sine. So this is sine of 4x plus pi. And then since it's sine of a linear function, I multiply by a 1 over 4. Okay? So again, there and there. Okay? You can do a little bit of simplifying here to make your answer a little prettier. Negative 2 thirds cosine of 3x plus one-fourth sine of 4x plus pi. Okay. Is that done? Use a C instead. And, yeah, the, you throw on your plus C at the end. Even if, like, you were doing an equation mm -hmm. and you integrated both sides, you would only put the plus C on one side of the equation, even. All right. So. All right. Now, another thing that we can do is using identities, okay? We can use identities. So, again, we're kind of broadening the types of functions that we're able to integrate here. So let's, let's consider what we're being asked to do here. We're, we're trying to integrate 2 minus sine x quantity squared dx. Now, initially here, you may say, okay, well, 
All right, sine 2 minus sine squared. I know when we had polynomials that, that were something squared like this, how did we integrate those? Yeah, we foiled it out, okay, and then we were able to use the power rule. So if we try that here, if we try that here, we get the integral of 4 minus 4 sine x plus sine squared x dx. And the first two parts are no problem. We can integrate those. This one, though, because it's a sine squared, we run into trouble, and we're not able to do that. Okay? So that's where, especially with trig, a lot of times we end up using trig identities to rewrite the function in a way that we can use our uh, antiderivatives for. Now, here's one example that uh, sine squared is a half minus a half cosine of 2x. Okay? Now, you might, um, you know, where, where does this come from? Well, sine squared, oops, if you think about this, um, Cosine of 2x, do you guys remember your identity for that? It's a double angle. It's a double angle identity. Would it be 2 sine squared minus 1x? No. Uh, negative 2 sine squared. I'm, I'm just reversing the function. It was, uh, if you remember, there are double angle formulas. Two sine, two sine of 2 theta was 2 sine cosine. Okay. We even have, this is actually in your formula booklet. This isn't your formula booklet. This is AP Calc's sheet for reference. But, but the cosine of 2x is cosine squared minus sine squared. Okay? An alternative way to write that, though, was a 1 minus 2 sine squared. Okay? That's cosine of 2x. All right, so that's using our double angle formula. Then if we distribute that one half, I have a half minus a half plus one sine squared x. And of course, those halves cancel out, and that equals sine squared x. So we've come up with this identity, and it's an identity that uses some, it looks more complicated, but the fact of the matter is it's actually useful here because then we can substitute that in, 4 minus 4 sine x plus the 1 half minus a half cosine of 2x. And while that does look more complicated, it gives us something that we actually can take the antiderivative of. Okay? So, as a result, now I have four different things that I can take the antiderivative of, or three if you put the four and the half together, and I'll do that. So that's four and a half x minus 4 times the integral of sine, which is, integral of sine is cosine. Cosine. negative cosine, okay, negative cosine, and then minus 1 half, the integral of cosine is sine, so it's going to be sine of 2x times a half, okay? because it's sine of a linear function, so it's 1 over a times the antiderivative. Okay? By the way, notice on all of these, when we're doing that, that just like the chain rule, when you did the derivative of the outer, the inner stayed the same, here you're doing the integral of the outer, the inner stays the same. It's still of 2x. Okay? So now we can simplify a little bit. 4 and a half x plus 4 cosine x minus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus c. And that's the integral of 2 minus sine quantity squared. Okay?
Okay. We did it. We did it. Yeah, that's pretty helped. <laughs> we followed. <laughs> we tried to contribute. Okay. So. So let's try this one. Okay. So the function f of x has a gradient function. This is putting putting together what we just did in the homework with what we just did in this lesson here. Okay. The gradient function f prime of x is 4 over radical 1 minus x. And we're also given a, a point on f of x. Okay? We're asked to find the point on the graph with an x coordinate of negative 8. So in order to figure out the point on the graph of y equals f of x where the x coordinate is negative 8, what do I have to figure out first? C. We will have to figure out C so that we can figure out what? Where it lies. The, line. the actual function. The actual function. Oh, okay. okay. This is how you guys, this is the problem solving that you guys need to kind of work backwards through. This is one way of problem solving. What we're really trying to find is we're trying to find F of negative 8, right? Yes. Right? Correct. Okay. Before we can do that, we have to find f of x. How do we do that? By doing the, the antiderivative. Yeah, we're going to do the antiderivative of f prime to get f of x. Okay? To actually get what f of x is, there's a step in, the, in between these two, and that's where we're finding C. Okay? So you can kind of think backwards. In order to get F of negative 8, I've got to know what F of X is. In order to know F of X, I've got to find the plus C. The pl where does that come from? That comes from when I'm taking the integral. Okay? So take a few minutes here, work with somebody, um, and see if you can't figure this out. I'm really bad at drawing the internet. All right, so now that you've worked on it, let's take a look at this, at the work that we've got, okay? So here's most of it. I haven't done the final step here yet, but... We'll talk through this. Okay, so we have 4 over the square root of something, which is 4 times something to the negative 1 half. Now, when we take the integral of something to the negative 1 half, it is something to the positive 1 half divided by a half, so times 2. Okay? So we get this 8 something to the half. All right? Now... That something is the 1 minus x. And this is the part that I think some people may have forgotten. Okay? Remember our formula that we looked at said multiply that then by a 1 over a, where a is the derivative of your u. Okay? Oh, to the negative. So we're multiplying by 1 over negative 1. Okay? Did you guys get 3? No, we got <coughs> negative 1. You got negative 1? Yeah, that's what okay. We said. Yeah. All right, so we do that, and then we get that f of x is f of x is a negative eight times the square root of one minus x, all plus c. Okay. So now we plug in the point that we were given. We were given this point negative three, negative eleven. So I plug that in, 1 minus a negative 3 is 4, so square root of 4 is 2, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and I add that to both sides and I get C equal to 5. That's equal to me. Okay? I, I guess. You did so well. So. Hey guys, what do you do once you have the C? Okay, so once we have the C... That's when we know what f of x actually equals. f of x is now a negative 8 
square root of 1 minus x plus 5. Okay? Now we actually know what the function equals. So if we need now f of negative 8, it's negative 8 square root of 1 minus a negative 8 plus 5. So 1 plus 8 is 9, square root is 3. I have a negative 8 times 3 plus 5. Negative 24 plus 5 is a negative 19. Okay? Those of you who got three, was, did you forget the negative? Yep. Okay, that's what I thought that's. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what you did. We didn't do use substitution. Oh. We moved it all up, but then we were like, let's do this. Okay. All right. So, that's a quick example, but guys, this is the kind of problem solving you need to be able to do. You're asked to find one thing. And you kind of have to work backwards. Just like in our previous units, you were asked to find what's the maximum value of the function. Well, you had to kind of think backwards. Oh, the max occurs, max and min points, that's, those came from critical values. We got those from setting the derivative equal to zero. So what's the first thing I need to do? I need to find the derivative. Then set it equal to zero. Then identify critical points. Then figure out which one's the max. And then plug it in to get the max value of the function. Our problem solving here is incorporating more and more steps, okay? But those are the kinds of things and processes that you kind of need to get into your head. If I need to find the value of a function and I'm given the derivative, okay, what do I need to do? I need to know what the function is. How do I do that? Well, I got to integrate the derivative. To get the exact function, I got to plug a point in to figure out what c is. You know, so those are all the kind of thinking that you need to do as you're working through these, okay?